Welcome back to Crystal Clear on the Roundtable. I'm your host, Austrick Vox, and very quickly, let's talk about Dewey Wins. You know, the one that was going to air early in Southeast Asia and then Off Colors aired instead? Yeah, that episode. Now, while the sneak peek played up the tension between Steven and Connie, that's seemingly not the focus of the episode. The description for the episode is actually, Steven helps Mayor Dewey run a difficult campaign. Which makes sense, because again, Dewey wins. As we pointed out before, the title is likely a reference to the incorrect banner headline, Dewey Defeats Truman in 1948. Off that knowledge alone, combined with the fact most Steven Universe titles don't give away the resolution that easily, we can infer Mayor Dewey won't be re-elected by the people of Beat City. Which absolutely blows for him because this was his series arc. Ever since his first appearance, we've known he's been working hard to remain mayor. Seeing Mayor Dewey lose may hurt, and his reaction will likely be cringy and kind of hard to watch. But I honestly think it'll benefit both the show and the citizens of Beat City. Like, tremendously in the long run. But we'll touch on that shortly. The question on everyone's mind is, who on earth could he possibly lose to? It's not that he's the greatest candidate suited for the job, but we've gotten to know a majority of the town pretty well. If he had a prominent opposer, we would have known by now. In the past, I've jokingly suggested Suke Sam could be his competitor, which has actually become a pretty popular idea in the community. And I just think it'd be hilarious because the man hasn't uttered a single line in the series. I've also suggested he could lose to a previously unseen character, introduced in Dewey Wins, that sweeps the people of Beach City off their feet and takes a stance against the Crystal Gems. And slowly but surely, the townsfolk turn against our protagonist, and as much as I would love a human threat to finally come into the fray, I admit it would be poor writing. Not poor writing because of the townsfolk, but because it'd be a character we barely know anything about. If this was a one-off gag, it'd be acceptable. But Steven Universe has a fleshed out world with fleshed out characters, even the townies. A bulk of them don't have completed arcs. Some haven't even been touched on. That being said, it's more fitting that Mayor Dewey would lose to an established character, but still have it make sense in the scope of the series. So pondering about who this opponent could be that advances both the character and Mayor Dewey's development, everything hit me. The title is Dewey Wins, and while it's a reference to a newspaper headline, I don't recall any news outlets in Steven Universe playing a huge role, especially in town episodes. The most we've gotten is Steven's fictional newspaper prop, The Wall Street Jungle, in the episode Tiger Millionaire, and various newspapers recalling previous events and Keep Beat City Weird. Episode titles and descriptions have had a habit of deceiving the audience, but not straight up lying to us. So I do believe there's validity behind the name Dewey Wins. Now, Steven's helping Mayor Dewey run a difficult campaign, the same episode where he and Connie are at odds as a result of Steven's actions, ones that he felt were right. This episode is also in a season where relationships of all kind are being tested. Dewey will win the election for mayor, but not the current Mayor Dewey, but his son, one of the fellow cool kids, Buck Dewey. Mayor Dewey likes to blind the citizens of Beat City from the weird supernatural occurrences that transpire, and just mundane issues like the power going out, even though the gems were the root of that issue. He's afraid they'll turn against him if they're made aware of these issues. Topaz and Aquamarine abducting Lars, Sadie, Connie, Onion, and Jamie isn't going to be just swept under the rug. In fact, Sour Cream was putting up missing posters for Onion. Who's one of Sour Cream's closest friends? Buck. We know Onion's family could understand his weird, not physical speak just fine. So when he returned home while Steven was on Homeworld, he lightly described the events of what happened. And Jamie probably lamented to Barb. We see Lars's parents upset in the San Diego Comic Con trailer. I think it's apparent Steven's returned to the entire town aware of what happened, and nobody's happy. Buck and his father have always been at odds. Both seem to be embarrassed by one another and have difficulty bonding. Buck doesn't think his father is hip, while Mayor Dewey doesn't want Buck to ruin his public image. We did find out in Shirt Club that they were close when Buck was young, hoping his dad make campaign posters, but at some point, they just grew distant. We never found out what happened to cause these two to not see eye to eye, but this episode may finally delve into that. After all, what would be a more difficult campaign for Mayor Dewey than going against his own son? Buck and Mayor Dewey's strained relationship may actually be a major factor in why Buck would ever run for mayor. Fed up with his father's actions and trying to dumb down the people of Beach City and not being honest with them, Buck wants to finally take a stand as an open, honest leader. Again, this would tie into the overall theme of Season 5, and thematically tie into Steven's conflict with Connie. Just like Steven felt like his actions were for the best, 
Mayor Dewey thought sheltering the town from the supernatural activity that's occurring was for the best. Also, let's not forget all the cool kids are a parallel to the Crystal Gems. Buck being Garnet, who's the current leader of the Crystal Gems. Buck is very reserved and level-headed. He could be a natural-born leader, actually wanting to deal with Beach City's problems and not leave anyone out of the loop and being younger and cooler than his father. I think he could easily win over his fellow citizens and take over the mantle of mayor. And the title would still be misleading but accurate. Dewey wins. Now you may be wondering, is he even eligible for mayor? And yes, in most states, you only have to be 18 or 21 to run for mayor. We can assume Buck is around the same age as Sadie, if not older. Sadie, who's stated by her own mother to be an adult, 18 years old. Now, Beach City is a fictional town, and I'm sure for a writing convenience, said town could easily say 18 is the required age to run for mayor, making Buck eligible. And it would test the relationship between Buck and Mayor Dewey. Coming full circle with not just the beginning of the episode and Steven's dilemma, but with season 5 setting up to be as a whole. As always, these are just my thoughts, and I'd love to hear yours. How do you feel about this theory? Could we see Buck Dewey as the new mayor of Beach City? Comment your ideas below or tweet them to me at Fox. You can also follow us for updates and shenanigans on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at RoundtableVids. We're also on Snapchat at RoundtableYT. If you want to be more social, you can join our Discord, download our official Amino app for iOS and Android, and if you want to support us in these trying times of YouTube, consider pledging a dollar on Patreon. You can also pick up a Steven Universe based tea or hoodie on our Teespring. Links to everything in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please throw it a like, share it, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, it really helps us out. Turn on that bell for notifications so you can keep up to date on all things Steven. I hope you have a beautiful day. And Ostrich Vox, signing out.